yielding or submitting, to wait for, to accept without opposition or question. So you abide in God, that means you're supposed to uh, uh, accept without opposition or question. So many times we want to question God, well, God, why I got to do this? Why I got to do that? And sometimes it's okay if you question God, but at the end of the day, you still don't have to do it. If you want to abide in God. Amen? Amen. We still have to obey to pay the price or penalty of suffer for. And so abiding in Christ, uh, God also brings about a certain level of suffering. And we just talked about that because too, and, and we're abiding, abiding in God, and we're doing what he's saying, and we're standing, and we're remaining, and we're continuing, continuing in him, and we're not yield, we're uh, standing without yielding or submitting, then we're going to go through some level of suffering. Persecution by people who may not understand, by situations that won't give, but we are not going to give them, we're not going to yield. So we could end up in a situation where we are suffering because we are abiding in God. But it says, abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself. So in regardless of the fact, if we don't abide in God, we will not be able to bear fruit. And according to what it says, if, if that uh, every branch of me that bear not fruit, he taketh away. So then we got cut, we got a choice here. <clears throat> Either we bear fruit, which we have to abide in God, which could also mean suffering, or we cannot bear fruit and and He taking it away. Amen. Amen. Or, uh, looking at verse number 6, it is, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So we got a choice. We can either abide in God or suffer the consequences of what could happen. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at withered, when we look at the definition of wither, it says <clears throat> to shrivel, fade, decay, to lose the freshness of youth as from age. And so we'll wither, and we don't abide in God, if we don't abide in God through Christ, we'll then find ourselves in a decaying condition. Amen? Amen. And so we got to keep that in mind. The choices here are seem to be cut and dry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you may have to suffer, but I'd much rather abide in him than wither away. Be taken away, wither away as in fade or decay. Shrivel up, dry. You a dry Christian. You ain't heard that expression before? A dry Christian? And then we could be a de de decaying, means our attitude jacked up and all kinds of stuff, situations going on in our lives. We don't know how that, because we aren't spending enough time with God. We're not abiding in Him. We're not mm -hmm. obeying. Amen? Right. We begin to wither up. And then we talked about that last time. When we begin to become withered, dry, fade, we're not bearing fruit. We're not being productive. Men can come along, just like the verse says, men and men gather them. Men, people can come along, tell us anything, any kind of win or doctrine, come along and just take us on away. And we'll run off into that. Amen? And then when Jesus comes, we're way off somewhere else and missing the boat because we didn't stay in Christ. We didn't stay in relationship. We didn't keep doing, keep bearing fruit. And that's another thing. It's bearing fruit, man. And we talked about fruit. Anything produced or accruing, meaning you continue to do it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Uh, the Bible talks about those disciples that continue in me. Amen? 
And so that means one day you can't be doing the same the Lord, then the next day you decide you don't want to do it no more. You must continue. It must be an accruing thing. It must be a cycle. Where I but I was bearing fruit today, and I'm gonna set myself up to bear fruit tomorrow, and I'm gonna set myself up to bear more fruit the next day. But that means that I have to continue abiding in my relationship with God. Or else, according to the word, we're in John 15, will wither up, decay, be taken away. Amen? So do you see the importance of being productive, being fruitful, but in order to do all of that, we have to stay in Christ. It has to be a continuous flow in Him. Mm -hmm. And see, many of us, even me, have realized that sporadic flow ain't working. It's, it's like, um, just like um, Pastor and his MS, uh, uh, the, the, connect, the communication is for kind of, uh, sp uh, it's like a connection that something's wrong with the, um, the plug and somebody's been eating at the plug and so when electricity goes down, it, it's hard for it to get, it's hard for it to get where it's supposed to go. And sometimes it's, it could go straight and then sometimes it could it not go, and sometimes it can take a while to get there, and it all depends on the fact that the connection is not clear. The connection is not, uh, it has been severed at some place. It's not whole. It's been eaten at. And so a lot of times our prayer life is like that. Our relationship or time we spend with God is like that. It's sporadic, so God could send a message on Tuesday that we don't go and spend time with him. We ain't going to get into Thursday. Amen? Mm -hmm. you were like, I'm so busy, I can't talk to God today. Not realizing that your ability to make do what you need to do on Tuesday required you to have conversation with him. And so whatever you were dealing with on Tuesday, you could still be dealing with it to, until Thursday because that's when you decide you want to talk to God. You see how that works? Mm -hmm. And then many of us, because we don't get with the program, we're looking for stuff to happen, and we wonder why it's taking years and years because there's some something that God is trying to communicate to us. And it's taken a long time to get to us because we made a decision not to have conversation or not to obey or not to abide. Mm -hmm. Amen? And so I've experienced that. Like I said, sometimes I was in situations where I was like, well, I don't have time to pray today. And I'm going to, you know, send a quick one up while I'm riding in my car. And I know between me and God, everybody's different. But between me and God, that's not going to work. Because he was like, that's not what you were doing yesterday. That wasn't what you were doing last week. What makes you so busy? What makes you think this day is any different that I can't handle your schedule, even mm -hmm. if you are busy? So still take that time with me and understand that if you take that time with me, I'll fix your schedule. But you know that. But on this particular day, you decide that's not what you want to do. And so the information that I could have given you that could have got you out of your situation on that day. You didn't come to me and talk to me like you normally do. And so you had to keep dealing with that thing until you decide you want to pray. Decide I want to spend some time or decide you want to obey. Amen? Mm -hmm. So being fruitful is continuous, should be a continuous process. Based on us abiding in God and Him abiding up, abiding in us. Amen. Amen. But we do not want to get to a place where we withered up and dried up because we stop abiding. And we see what abiding. Just look at the definition: remaining, continually, staying, dwelling, residing. Continue in a particular condition, attitude, relationship. Get through attitude in there. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right, so looking at verse number seven, it says, If ye abide in me, 
and my words abide in ye, you, excuse me, ye shall ask what ye will, and what? And it shall be done. Mm -hmm. Now that ought to motivate us <laughs> to stay and keep abiding. That's right. Because just like I said, when we start missing that time with God, God, we can't, we ask him for certain things, but he's in turn now to give us the strategy. The community, he's got to communicate how to get it done. And again, I could go back to passing his MS. You, he asked his legs to go somewhere. His brain wants his foot or his leg to do something. And a lot of times the message is delayed. And so when he get ready to step out, his leg ain't ready. And he'll do, that's why you see him try to play it off and he'll do something like this because it has not been communicated to his leg what to do. And so again, think about how we do. Many of us trip and fall because we haven't had that conversation or that communication from God or it got to us too late. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Some of us be having an MS <laughs> prayer life. You know, a lot of times it's, it's a matter of us, uh, you know, we, we don't abide in God. It's, it's, a, it's a matter of us uh, prioritizing. And you are exactly you right. Know, we're so used to, you know, getting in this, into the trouble or getting into the mess, then we call on exactly. God. Exactly. But if you if you thought, if you added God, just like, you know, saying how you, when you sit down and pay your bills, first thing you want to do is take care of your house. Mm -hmm. Then you want to take care of your cars and everything mm -hmm. else. And, you know what I'm saying, and everything else, you prioritize how you, how you do it. So, you know what I'm saying, we got to make sure, you know what I'm saying, we putting God first in the priority. And, you know what I'm saying, and then everything else, you know, after that. That's exactly right. And so many of us have uh, delayed reactions in our finances or delayed reactions in some of our situations. Because, once again, we're, we are late in reacting to what we're supposed to do, what God was, has asked us to do. And so then we doing one of these numbers. Our finances doing one of these numbers. And, we, <laughs> and then sometimes it just lay down and die. <laughs> and then, and just like you said, it's, and so then we're going to ask God to resurrect it. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, I know you can resurrect. He said, yeah, I can resurrect it. Yep. But um, I asked you to do thus and such way long before you even trip, before it start tripping. You done forgot to pay your time. <laughs> You could have forgot that. You could have forgot to pay your tithes or didn't pay your tithes or whatever the case may be. We didn't obey God in a certain situation, meaning abide mm -hmm. or stand or wait on Him. You know, like I said, look at the definition of abide. It basically maps out everything God is saying in this scripture, what we should be doing. And then it says, if you do that, if you do all of what abide says, then you ask me for something, it shall be done. It is a condition here. You see, that says if. So, you know, the fact that we're breathing, some things are unconditional. But don't sleep. There's some conditions for some stuff that we asking God to do. Amen? And he's looking for, as you say, a continuous feed. Because we, just like we talked about um, last Sunday, there's some places God wants to take us. We, he, we ain't going to be kept unless we got faith. Mm -hmm. We got to have more, we have to work our faith where we go. We can't be sporadically doing stuff. We have to be on, now God is trying to get us in a constant feed of obedience, a constant feed of prayer, a constant feed of study, consistency. We've talked about this before. M many of the things that we're trying to do, places God wants to take us, requires us to be in consistency with our relationship and communication with God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And so and that's what it's saying. Abide. Definition? Continue. In other words, on the good on the good foot, continuing what you're doing and wait. Whatever the definition says. Mm -hmm. So you could be doing all of these things. You could be doing everything right, and you still haven't seen the manifestation. And according to the definition of a mind, 
then wait. Amen? Because mm -hmm. that's another test. That's another. Yeah, you're doing everything right, supposedly. You, you um, praying, you obeying, and, and, and you say, well, my stuff still ain't popped off yet. Wait. That's right. Amen? God said, I got this a bad thing coming. <laughs> <laughs> and so for many of us, that's issue. Because think about it. Your faith has a lot to do with you being able to wait on God to do a thing. That's right. And everybody around you could be doing all kinds of things to get the same thing you want. Same thing he has promised. But you got to wait. And that takes faith. And that takes the ability to stand, the ability to remain, the ability to continue, to the ability to accept without opposition or question. But you know the thing we want to say, well, why God, why my stuff ain't popping off? And so should someone still be popping off. Are you gonna wait? Well, according to a buyer, you got to wait. And then according to a buyer, without opposition. So stop kicking against the brick. Stop kicking against God. And even though you question at the end of the day, you're going to wait. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Or else we are running the risk of shriveling up, fading away, decaying, and being carried off by any wind or doctrine. Or man telling us anything. Check it. Again. Again, we're looking for something God has said he's going to do. We see everybody else doing it. But God said, that's not the way I want you to do it. And you better stand in what God has told you. Amen? Amen. And in other words, and in other words, the last definition, eight, pay the price, suffer. <laughs> <laughs> So harsh. So, that's what he's saying. But check it out. On the good, on the good foot. When you get to where you're going, like, guess what? You're gonna appreciate, aren't you? Amen. That's right. Just like we treat, teach our own children, work for it. It's we all know it's some stuff God could drop in our lap, but He wants us to work for it, have the faith for it, so when we get it, we can keep it. Mm -hmm. When we get there, we can stay there and not be easily knocked off because we got to wait, because we got to be faithful, because we, because we don't get the answer today, but we got to wait till tomorrow and everybody else is jumping off. If God puts you in a place or a position and he wants to get the glory, your faith has got to be um, uh, uh, worked. Amen? So, you know, when people say when they get to a certain place, I done paid my dues. And many times they have. They paid the price to get there. And man, you know when they talk about um, salvation is free, but they're not the cause. That's right. Amen? So as we start obtaining these gifts and these anointings to do what God calls us to do, we don't have to pay for that. Through sweat, through weight, through faith, through suffering from, not from God, but from people or situations around us that are trying to get us to do something different. Amen? Amen. But when you get there, you go, just like we said today, so you might get, you might be beat up trying to get there, but that's only because God is pushing greatness out of you. Greater is coming. But you got to be ready and prepared for greater. Because mm -hmm. greater come before we're ready, greater will run over us. That's right. Leave us laying dead on the ground and pop off with somebody else. That's right. <laughs> right about that. You know I'm telling the truth. We done seen it happen. We watch them some. <laughs> <laughs> so do. What? Greatness overtake you. You can't handle it and it'll leave you laying right there dead and go off with somebody else. Because mm -hmm. we couldn't handle it. We tried to get it too quick. Amen. We didn't do it God's way. Amen. 
So when we look at that analogy, that picture, yeah, I'll wait. <laughs> Amen. I know that's right. All right, so that was good, Lord. That was good. But anyway, the point is, you get in a place with God, and whatever you ask for, it shall be done. Now, when he says shall be done, you don't necessarily mean it's going to shall be done today. That's where the weight come in. But you're going to know that you know that you know that you know. Because you're spending time with him, and he's abiding in you. And I saw a good, a great message by T.D. Jakes called it shall be. It's called it shall be done or it shall be or something like that. And that was what he was talking about. How do you know that it shall be? If, you, if he is in you and you are abiding in him, your spirit going to know that you know that you know mm -hmm. that that thing is going to happen. That's right. And that's how you can hold on to the very last cup, to the very last detail, to the very last molecule of your existence in faith that is going to happen because you're abiding in God and he's abiding in you and you know that you know that you know that you know. That you know. Amen? Amen? Now, if you ain't spending time with God, you yourself can come up with anything. And it ain't necessarily going to happen because you came up with it. But if you spend enough time with God, he going to keep telling you that thing. He going to keep he gonna keep hitting you over the head with that thing. Every time you have prayer, every time you do study, that thing going to keep popping up. And you're not going to be able to get away from it. Mm -hmm. and every, every time you lay down at night, you're going to have some kind of dream about it. Girl, y'all, I done had dreams. Stuff ain't popped out. I had dreams five years ago. Stuff ain't popped out. I done had dreams five years ago, stuff just popping out. Amen? Amen. So God be the Lord, but you have to wait. But know that if you are abiding in him and, and you and he in you, it shall be done. Because you don't want to call with God. And whatever it is that you are desiring is because he put it there. Amen? Verse 8. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So who's being glorified? Because you bear fruit. So he, gonna, so he really, really wants you to bear a whole lot of fruit. Because he's being glorified when we do that. Mm -hmm. When we are productive in him. When lives are changed because he's allowed to use us. Lives are changed because we are continuing in him. Lives are changed because our attitude is in him. We're changing other people's lives because we're enduring in him. Uh, we're, some of us have to suffer in him. Uh, we're standing and not yielding and not submitting to something else other than God. People's lives change and you are productive. You have more fruit or being productive. You may, have, you may gain gifts because you use the gifts that you have. Amen? Amen. All for his glory. So why would he not do it? Because it's all for his glory. Why would he not adhere to his word? Then it says right here in verse 7, whatever you ask for. Why would he not do it? Because in verse number 8 it says, herein is my father glorified. Verse number 9, as the father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Verse number 10. If ye keep. Here we go. This stuff is conditional y'all. Yes God loves you unconditionally. But there are some conditions to what. He to this walk. If ye keep my commandments. Ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my father's commandments. And abide in his love. And so what it means about abiding in his love is our operation will be in his love. We will always operate in God's love if we are keeping his commandments. First being love him with all your heart. Second, love your neighbor like you love yourself. If you keep those commandments, and then we go back to the Ten Commandments, which all he all wrapped up and summarized in those two. Keep the commandments and ye shall abide in my love. 
even as he has kept the commands and he's abided in his love. These things I have spoken unto you. We're going to close on verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you. And that your joy might be full. And so what he's saying is all these things that I have told you, all these things that I have talked to you about, these things I have spoken to you so that his joy might remain in you. So you'll have some joy. If I stay in God and he in me, I can ask for whatever and it shall be done. All I got to do is wait. All I got to do is stand. All I got to do is go through some stuff. God will be with me. All I got to do is continue. All I got to do is endure. Uh, this will come to an end and then God will give me whatever that is I'm asking for. All I'm, only reason why I'm going through is because I'm productive. Only reason why the enemy is messing with me is because I'm productive. That's some good news. Because mm -hmm. some of us think it's just because. But we like to know that we're being productive, don't we? The more the enemy messing with you, the more you're getting dealt with to, to uh, be different, to go to the air, the more you're being called to the next level, means you, the more productive you are being. And the more productive you are being, the more productive God will make you. That's good news. Amen. And the more you abide in God and He in you, no matter what you ask for, it shall be. Ain't that good news? Mm -hmm. And whatever you're doing, he wants you to bear much fruit. He is being glorified. Amen? I'm telling you this so you can have some joy. There's a reason why you go through what you go through. There's a reason why you feel like every time you turn around, why I'm doing all of this and I'm working for God and I'm doing this for God and I always seem like I'm getting kicked in the teeth and this ain't right and that ain't right. And it's because God is purging you so you can go to the next level. Get some joy. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. God, again, God ain't, the enemy ain't going to mess with you. The kingdom ain't going to mess with you unless you are being productive. And so for many of us right now, that's some good news. But we want to know when folk going to leave me alone. Never. <laughs> as long as you keep staying productive for God, Amen. then the enemy ain't going to ever leave you alone. Amen. But the good news is God always got your back. Mm -hmm. And you're going to produce not only the fruit that you've already produced, you're going to produce much, much more. Amen? Amen. That's good news. So get some joy. Don't be sad. Be happy. When the enemy start messing with you, it's only because we are being productive. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're going to close for tonight. Amen. But again, you can continue studying uh, uh, John 15. Amen. And, and remember the words that we call out. Get definition. That will give you some sure enough revelation. Uh, purge, bind, husbandman, branch, fruit, abide, wither, fire, servant, friend, chosen and persecuted. Amen. Get, and also examine the difference between a servant and a friend. Because according to the word it says that he, he called us no longer his servants but his friends. And so understand what the difference between a servant and a friend is. Amen. God will bless you. Amen. Again, so we're going to close on tonight. We thank God for those who watch tonight via Ustream. We thank God for those who are here tonight. Amen. Here at Truth for Life Ministries and Bible Study here at 2940 Wakefield Pines Drive, Unit 107, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27614, where the senior pastor here is Elder Eric Sproul, and I am yours truly, the executive pastor here, uh, Carmen Evangelist Carmen Sproul. Amen. But again, we thank God for you, and we pray that you come back and, and visit us next Tuesday at 730 for Bible study, and also Come and visit us here for Sunday service via Ustream or here at the building. Amen. We'll be glad to see you here or online. Again, we're going to pray our way out of here. So if everyone would please stand to your feet. Amen. And we're going to thank God for the revelation and the understanding we received on tonight. Let's bow our hands.
Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you right now for everything that has been said and done. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for everything that you've done for us, to us, and around us, God. And we ask for traveling mercy, God, and we ask for those who want to go to another level in you, God, that you abide with them, God, so they may abide with you. Lord, we give you honor, we give you the glory, and we give you the praise. And in Jesus' precious name, everybody say amen. 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 To God be the Lord. You are dismissed in the name of Jesus Christ.